Frenzy on News 18. Sports from where you live. Well, welcome back after that short halftime. I'm glad to see that you stuck around for the second half of our show because we got some exciting games on the lineup. So let's just stop talking and just jump right into the action. And we're starting this round of highlights off hot because one team here was looking for revenge. West Lafayette facing off against the Harrison Raiders who wouldn't go down so easy this time. Third quarter, Harrison looking to come out strong, and that they do thanks to quarterback Calix Dillon, who airs one out to Jackson Swapwood, who has no one around him, and he's easily able to get into the end zone. Raiders now up 12-0, and the team wasn't the only one celebrating. Turning now to the fourth quarter, Harrison back on offense, and this time Dillon hands it off to Chris Ferguson. Run, Forrest, run. I thought at this point he would house it, but Westside's defense comes up big and stops him just short of the goal line. And while that may not have been a touchdown, this was. Ferguson finally got in the end zone after fighting through some traffic. He was definitely happy after that one. Harrison would dominate the Red Devils tonight and win 42-6, finally getting their revenge win from last year. Now across the river, Central Catholic was hosting Seeger for their first game of the season. And let's just say this was a very interesting way to start the year. Right off kickoff, Central Catholic starts to take it downfield. Or so we thought, the Seeger Patriots punched the ball out of Bryn Robbins' hands and the Knights are unable to recover it. But don't worry, this defense is not letting anything get through them tonight. Check out this big time sack from Jackson Kane. Boom, bringing him down easy. That big time play for Seeger to punt. And now the Knights are on O. And this time, this team decides to make quick work of the Patriots. Bobby Metzger with plenty of time to throw, finds the hands of Alex Hardebeck, who's just juking players left and right, fighting through tackles just to get into the open space where he finds the end zone. But the offense can't be the only one scoring. Seconds after the touchdown, the defense forces a safety, and the Knights would just continue to roll on from there. Final score, CC wins 35-8. And like I said before, this season is already shaping up to be a great one. And we literally just started. Now we've seen some very exciting games so far tonight and we still have more to get into, but this time we got to take a look at our special guest who is on set with us. Sports 18's Gabe Obermiller lets us know what all went down at his two games tonight. Hey there, Gabe. Welcome back to the Friday Night Frenzy. So happy you're here. Happy to be here, Bree. Yeah, former Lafayette Central Catholic head coach Kevin O'Shea making his debut as head coach of the Twin Lakes Indians tonight. Now, the Indians taking on the Tigers of Northwestern. One team will finish the game with an undefeated record. It's Northwestern striking first, but they'll miss the extra point. Tigers up six to nothing. Indians turn with the ball, and C.J. Brummett will plow through for the first down, and his night just getting started. Twin Lakes turning to the air, and after a few big blocks, the Indians pick up another first down. You heard his name already. C.J. Brummett caps off the drive with a touchdown, and they'll make the extra point to go up 7-6. to six. Now, after a defensive stand, the Indians' offense will hit the field again, driving the length of the field, and none other than C.J. Brummett will pick up his second touchdown of the night. It's all red from here. Twin Lakes takes this 37-14 to start the season off 1-0. Jumping over to Clinton County, Clinton Prairie taking on the Falcons of Frontier in their season opener. Now, first score of the game, little bit of a weird one. Seth Whitlock is going to take the handoff and go down. Complete silence from the refs, but Braden Jarbeau is convinced that he's in. And the final verdict, he is. Prairie goes up 7 to nothing. Now, Prairie has the ball again after a good defensive showing. QB Steven Dunford lets it fly, and Caden Davis leaves no question on this touchdown as he goes up and makes the play. Two-point conversion attempt, however, dashed with a Falcons interception. Can't leave this one out. Blake Sorensen back deep to return for the Falcons, and he's going, 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 gone. No one is catching Sorensen tonight. Touchdown Frontier Falcons. Clinton Prairie ultimately too much, though, and Frontier will fall to the Gophers 48-18. to That does it for my highlights tonight. Bree, back to you. Gabe, it was so wonderful to have you for football season. Thank you so much for helping out. Now with that, we are done with the highlight portion of our show, but don't worry, we still got a lot more coming up for you after the break. After all, we gotta check out scores from the games that we couldn't make it to tonight, and you'll find out which Purdue football player just left the program. That's up next, so stick around.